Okay, wait, let's just hang on. I know everyone's falling in love with this phone. There's so much hype. But you know what? Enough with the glitz and glamour. Enough with the hype. I'm going to keep it real and answer the most important question there is. Is this actually a good phone to buy under 25k? And yes, this review will answer all your questions on Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. This is Rupesh from Silicon. Subscribe if you haven't. And let me start off by saying one sentence that I think sums up this phone almost perfectly. The Nothing Phone 2A is the jack of all trades, but master of none. I mean, there's obviously a lot to like about this phone, but it's not perfect. I mean, nothing is. Nothing isn't. Starting off with this eye-catching design, and I know there have been doubts around its plastic back and plastic frame, and I'll get to that in just a bit. But one thing is for sure, this is one good-looking phone. I mean, I really wish nothing would have sent me this in white because I've seen the white version in the flesh and I think it looks better because this catches a lot of fingerprints and smudges. But make no mistake, no matter which color, this is one phone that looks absolutely awesome. I mean, this bag gives this phone so much personality, especially with all the details here, the glyph LEDs. The front too maintains the premium look, with its unified bezels and yeah it's a very very cool looking phone and it just stands out in fact i can even tell you that the plastic here does not give off a cheap wipe the plastic in the frame has a soft touch feel to it very grippy the back also feels very nice but there is another side to this plastic design so i've been using this phone caseless because of two reasons one nothing does not bundle a case in the box two this looks great without a case but here's the sad part I dropped this phone and it was not a big drop. I dropped it to the floor from like two feet, but it did scratch the back. So I don't think this back is very scratch proof, but I think we'll get a much better idea after like two, three months. So stay tuned to our Twitter page. Now, one thing is for sure, this is not a compact phone, but it's not too hefty or too big. I mean, it's 8.5 millimeters thick and weighs 190 grams, which is totally fine. Is that that it's a bit wider than say a phone like the H40 Neo. For clarity wise, this has an in-display fingerprint scanner, which is fast and nice. This also has face unlock, which works. The stereo speakers are also good, fairly loud and fairly crisp. This also has the IP54 rating. This has dual SIM slots, but there's no micro SD support. And I know there are phones like the Poco X6 with a headphone jack. There's Moto H40 Neo with a proper IP rating, Moto H40 with a proper IP rating and wireless charging. But yeah, the Phone 2A does miss out on these features. The Nothing Phone 2A does bring Nothing's party trick though, the Glyph LEDs. I mean, they are more minimal here with only three LEDs, but they do the fun things like the cool combo of sound and light for ringtones and notification. It works as a music visualizer and it's all fun, but nothing has tried to add some usefulness to this. It shows you the progress of your Uber cab or an order from Zomato, Zomato, Zomit, whatever. It works as a volume indicator. It shows you a persistent light for important, aka essential notifications. And I personally use the glyph timer feature the most. I think it's really good. Now, I understand this is nothing's affordable smartphone, but I do miss a couple of glyph LEDs features one the charging indicator the charging meter on the bottom and second the red led that lights up when recording a video anyway moving to the display you already know the specs and i can tell you that you will enjoy this display like i did mostly it looks sharp and nice it has punchy colors deep blacks nice viewing angles and yeah content looks great on this and using it is also nice and smooth i also really like the haptics on this phone especially for a phone in this segment also this is an hdr certified display and hdr videos in youtube look amazing but netflix does not show HDR support on this because it does not come pre-installed. The one area where the display isn't the best is outdoor visibility. I mean, this is usable outdoors. I'd say it's kind of fine. But when compared to the Poco X6, you can see the difference in brightness. In terms of performance, this has the Dimensity 7200 Pro. I'm not sure what difference the Pro brings. Probably better optimization because the optimization is good. I mean, in terms of benchmarks, it does beat the likes of the Poco X6 and the Moto H40 Neo. And I did not see any throttling issues and not just this. The performance is very good too. The phone is fast and snappy in day-to-day -day usage and even gaming is good. I did long gaming tests on the phone and games like BGMI run very well. So does something like Asphalt. Genshin is in the best at high settings, but it's definitely playable at medium. Also, yes, the phone does warm up after like 20, 30 minutes of benchmarks or gaming, but it's never too hot, you know? I mean, I'm not gonna stretch this. In my usage so far, this does not have heating or battery drain issues. Now, the real debate has been around the LPGDR 4X RAM and UFS 2.0 two storage on this phone and my take on this is specifically for the base variant the 24k is i'm fine with it i mean the performance is very good here and considering nothing's good track record of updates i'm not expecting this phone to like have a crazy slowdown later on and we talk about another debated aspect of this phone let's talk about the cameras 
So a little story. When the phone first arrived, I set it up and I started using cameras and I was like, okay, here's the catch. And then an update arrived and things just got better. See, these are the specs of the real cameras and I'll tell you this, the cameras here are not perfect, but for this price range, they are plenty good. See, nothing has been known for its natural tone in its photos, but in the 2A, I feel the photos have a slightly warmer tone, which is fine. I mean, photos look rich and after that, the camera here mostly gets the exposure on point, be it in daytime or low light. And there's a good balance of highlights and shadows and dynamic range is very good. I mean, I did take a few comparison photos versus the Poco X6 and in daytime, it's a close call, but I found the phone 2A to be better, especially in low light. Anyway, ultra wide angle shots are also fairly good, no problems there. And even videos, I thought the phone 2A was pretty good for the price. Stability is good, colors and sharpness are on point. There is sometimes this UIA shake in videos when recording while walking. And there is this bug that records a laggy video like this, although this only happened once. But either way, I do hope nothing fixes this with an update. Now, once again, I did compare things with the Poco X6 and in daytime while walking, you can see the X6 has even more OIA shaking and a lot of focus hunting. In low light, the X6 video is just more blurry, noisy. So yeah, the Phone 2A's videos are actually good. Now, like I said, the Phone 2A cameras aren't perfect. The ported mode weirdly amps up the face, boosting the exposure specifically on the face. And I don't like it, especially when the selfie camera is so good at capturing detailed, accurate face tone, even in the ported mode. I mean, just stick the selfie camera optimization and paste it to the portrait mode in rear cameras. Probably not how it works, but just do the thing. Now, personally, why this phone really appeals to me is the experience. I'm just going to put it out there. I love nothing OS. I mean, it's not perfect. Nothing is not. But this is an OS that just gets me excited about using an Android phone. The cool typography, the ton of cool widgets like this camera widget or this compass widget, which is just so much fun. This new recorder widget that lets you record calls without a beep. The different quick settings widgets, which lets me put the phone into airplane mode from the home screen here itself and fix all my internet issues. All the fun wallpaper effects, the new AI wallpapers, the monochrome icon pack. All of this just makes me want to set up the home screen like the good old days. Have fun with it. And just a quick tip. If you love the monochrome icon pack and hate some icons not supporting it, just install the nothing icon pack from the Play Store and it fixes things. Yeah, thank me later. And my love for nothing OS isn't just about good looks. It's mostly very smooth and well optimized. There's absolutely no bloatware. It's a super clean experience. And I think nothing is doing great in terms of updates. This phone comes with Android 14 and this will go to Android 17. And that's not something I can say about most phones in this price segment. Now I said it's not perfect because there are a few bugs I noticed in Nothing OS 2.5 on the phone 2A. So there's the video recording bug that I talked about earlier. The battery usage page in the settings sometimes refuses to show the screen on time. Even the widget goes blank. Also, once the home screen just went blank, everything was working except for the home screen. Yeah, these are minor things, but just putting it out there for nothing to fix. Anyway, while I could not note the screen on time, the 5000 mAh battery here easily lasts for a day. I usually would start the day at 100% and at the end of the day, the battery would be around 20-30% and that's on medium to heavy usage, which is pretty good. As for charging, there's obviously no charger in the box, only the transparent cable and this cool SIM ejector. But I did charge the phone with this Samsung 45 watt charger and took the phone from 10-50% to 50 in 20 minutes and to 100% in 69 minutes. Nice. Look, it's time to get to the bottom line. Is this the phone to buy under 25k? Look, like I've said throughout this video, this is not a perfect phone. There are obviously some cost cuttings. There are some things that could have been way better but if anyone asks me bro i want a good phone under 25,000 rupees i'd say go for the nothing phone to it yes if they specifically mention that they want the absolute best performance i'd say go for the poco x6 pro but other than that this is just a great all-around phone the pros in this phone just outweigh the cons for me now if you have any more questions on the nothing phone 2a make sure to comment down below and i'll try to answer them and subscribe to silicons for more amazing reviews like this thanks for watching i'll see you the next one